Good evening. Tonight on SA Today, we have Lyle Weston, the PR Director for SA, and Boris Gressley, the President, in studio. This is SA Today. A bill not enacted by Congress just last year is up for round two. The Campus Accountability and Safety Act was reintroduced last Thursday. It's backed by 12 senators, 6 Democrats, and 6 Republicans, and will require every colleague to have a confidential advisor for students. Senator Gillibrand and Representative John Katko were both on campus yesterday for roundtable on sexual assault. Gillibrand is optimistic the bill will be passed this time around. The Whitman School is teaming up with Staples to analyze supply chains and how they are managed. During the partnership, faculty and students will take on two projects to look at big data and risk assessment using the company's customer orders. The results of the projects will improve the, the company's supply chain and inventory management. A 62-year-old man was robbed by teen boys at the local bus stop. Officers arrested the teens shortly after the victim was assaulted. The shorter of the teens struck the victim in the face with what was later identified as a BB gun. The victim refused medical treatment. The older of the two, Brandon Sims, was charged with a felony while his 14-year-old accomplice will spend his sentence at the Hillbrook Detention Center. Former coach of Rakeem Christmas Ryan Gluns witnessed the last game of Christmas's Carrier Dome career. Gluns, his wife, and his daughter were there of just the, th the 2,338,000 fans. Sadly, Syracuse was unable to beat out Virginia, currently ranked number two in the NCAAs. The team acknowledges Christmas's invaluable contributions to SU basketball and only wish that he could have ended his basketball career at the Carrier Dome with a victory. The College of Arts and Sciences announced the establishment of the Charles Brightman Endowed Professorship of Physics. Joseph and Charlotte Stone bequest the Department of Physics $1.4 million for the professorship. Both are alumni of the Newhouse School. This professorship is designed to attract and retain the best physicists in the field. SU hopes this will bring the most qualified staff available. An unusual deal has been struck in the Syracuse courts. Edwin Martinez pled guilty to possessing an illegal handgun in downtown Syracuse. But he will be allowed to withdraw his plea if he doesn't like the judge's sentence. According to the judge, Martinez will face at least the minimum amount of jail time, and Martinez will be due back in court on April 3rd. Former SU basketball coach Bernie Fine is not so fine. He is suing Rochester nightclub owner Ronald Davis. Davis rented Fine's old Syracuse home when he could not sell it after losing his coaching job at Syracuse University. Davis is being sued for thousands of dollars worth of rent and $130,000 in damages to the property. Davis said he had a rent-to-own agreement, but found much more damage than anticipated when he began renovations. Hillary Clinton is in some hot water for possibly concealing information by not using her government email account. Government regulations say that personal email can be used in emergencies, when, when they are used they must be properly archived. Clinton's spokesperson said that she properly turned over the information, but the New York Times reported that she did not. The State Department reported that Clinton used her personal email only for classified purposes and communicated with other people through multiple mediums. David Petraeus is pleading guilty to federal charges for telling his mistress classified information. Petraeus served as the director of the CIA, but resigned in November of 2012 after news of his extramarital affair with his biographer. Petraeus' plea deal would end in a Justice Department investigation. The Israeli Prime Minister is not happy about the potential agreement between Iran and other world powers. Benjamin Netanyahu addressed the joint houses of Congress today and spoke out strongly against President Obama's negotiations with Iran about its 50 nuclear programs. Excuse me, 50 Democrats boycotted the speech and President Obama announced that it would contain nothing new. Earlier today, SUSA President Boris Gresley came in to give his presidential address. Let's take a look. Good evening, everybody. I am Boris Gresley, your Student Association President. We will be releasing an official list of candidates for the election soon, and the elections for the next Student Association President will be held in late April. SA is offering buses for spring break, and tickets are still available to New York City, New Jersey, Washington, D.C., and Philadelphia. Tickets can be purchased at the, at the Shine box office, or our Wegmans and Target buses will run again on March 22nd, April 12th, and April 26th. We will have posted more content on our blog, which can be found at syracusestudentassociation.webpress.com. 
We will be releasing a newsletter soon detailing the great work our committees did in February. Don't forget to like Student Association on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at SA at SU for more information and frequent updates. Thank you. Coming up, I sat down with SAPR Chair Lyle Weston to talk about the lack of participation in this year's election. Stay with us. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. If I got to go to college, oh my goodness. I like discovering new things. You get to see what works for you and what doesn't. That helps you evolve as a person. You get to make like a, a supernova of skill or talent or whatever it is. I've always wanted to go to college. I just feel like that's my destiny. My name is Queen and I am your dividend. I've got a job to do today. I have got a job to do today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in your community. Feels good to start fresh, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator. Last night's Student Association General Assembly meeting was one of the most productive of the year. The General Assembly passed five bills last night, three of which were pertaining to the Board of Elections and membership. The BEM bills focused on candidates for the Student Association and requirements for interviewing as well as campaigns. You can see them on your screen. In addition to these three bills, SA also voted to establish the Benjamin Jones Award for Outstanding Student Association Alumni, which honors students who continue to help Student Association even after graduation. The last bill, which University Senate Accountability Act of 2015, gives the SA Vice President more prevalence in groups across campus, including University Senate, the faculty governing body. Earlier today, I spoke with the Student Association pair PR Chair Lyle Weston about the lack of participation in this year's election. Here's what he had to say. So Lyle, it's March, which here at SU we think of that more for March Madness and basketball, but this year we're turning our eye to election season for the first time in SU history. This year though, there's only one candidate running for president. Could you talk about why that is and maybe if you think there's a lack of interest in this year's essay candidacy or what you think is going on? Sure. Uh, I definitely don't think there's a lack of interest. Um, all five election packets that we put out in the essay office were taken, um, but only one was returned. And that comes with the process. Um, people take it, they seem interested, and then they realize they have to get 500 signatures or um, they're going to get checked, their academic uh, status is going to get checked, and they decide that they're not going to hand in the paper because it's just too much work. And so I don't think it's a lack of interest. I, I just think that one person was able to get the information together and get their stuff together in time. So initially there were two who were actually in the process. They got the signatures and they were up to go. One of them withdrew, correct? Uh, that is correct, yes. So do you think that maybe the process is too rigid and that might change in the future to make it more easily accessible for students looking to run for president and vice president? Uh, I'm not sure it should change because I think it should be difficult for someone to get to that point and get on the ballot. I mean. Uh, we're talking about a school-wide election. We're talking about $1,000 in campaign money. Um, people, should be, people should have to work hard to get to that point to, to allow them to, to run around campus um, trying to run for SA president. With that said, it's something that the Assembly could, uh, could potentially look at. Um, I don't know if they will, uh, but it's definitely a matter for them to take up and not me. 
do you think there's any level of concern with the fact that there's only one candidate, or is this something that SA is just happy to, to face and happy to look forward to? Um, I, I think that, I, I don't think there's any concern. I think it happens. Um, sometimes there's more interest and sometimes there's less. Uh, over the last two elections, I believe we've had about five candidates. Um, so th this is just, a, we're just not used to this. Do you think it might be because it's the first time that this is happening in March and April rather than usually the beginning of the semester or beginning of the academic year that the elections happen? You know, I'm really not sure. It's something that we'll, we'll learn a little bit more over time. Uh, I can definitely see the argument there where people are kind of entrenched in what they're doing and uh, aren't as open to a new experience or to uh, starting a campaign. Um, but at, at first glance, I don't think that's the case. And I think it's just um, just the year we're in and the interest that's had, and I think you'll see a difference next year. Great. So turning the table a little bit, uh, the person who is running right now, being the only candidate, will we see them just go into office? Elections are still happening. So what's the process going to look like for her going into the election system? Sure. Um, I believe that the person running will be running a full campaign, uh, as far as I know, um, as if they were running against someone else. Um, there is still the opportunity for write-in ballot. Um, so anyone who is interested in starting at this point can and can try to get their name written in on the ballot enough times. Um, but in order to validate the election, 10% uh, of the undergraduate population here at Syracuse does need to vote. So in order for to, her to go into office um, seamlessly, they're going to need 10% of the vote. All right. So that would be something like 1,800 students, right? Something along those lines? Give or take. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what the count is. Do you know any idea of like numbers of what you see for turnout of votes, for instance, in last election system? How many voters actually voted? Or do you have any idea of those numbers? Um, I don't have the exact numbers right now. But I do know that the last election when Boris won uh, his campaign was when it was the most ever uh, students voting. So they had the most students ever vote uh, on that election. And they had three really great candidates. Um, for that one. All right, great. Well, Lyle Weston, thanks for being with us. We're looking forward to the elections this season. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. We'll talk about the spring break weather and have you had pancakes today? We'll tell you why you should get yourself to IHOP ASAP. Stay tuned. Teacher, let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Thank you, dear. Oh, you're very supple. Just like I was at your age. Back then, I was a sex expert. You used to call me the buttered biscuit. I know about birth control, too. So you can ask me anything, baby. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... Have you had sex in this car yet? As spring break approaches, unfortunately, spring weather does not. This week, you can expect temperatures to reach above freezing with a high of 36 degrees tomorrow. There are still snow showers expected tonight and later in the week, but skies should clear up by the end of the week for students driving home for break. Kevin Rice has been named the ACC Men's Lacrosse Offensive Player of the Week after his performance against Virginia on Sunday. Rice scored three goals and helped out with four assists to secure Syracuse's number one rank in the NCAAs. This was Rice's 13th career five-point game and his 16th game with at least three assists. He has surpassed both Liam Banks and JoJo Marasco on the SU all-time assist chart. SU is hopeful that Rice will continue to light up the stat sheet. Well, IHOP is giving away a short stack of pancakes in the name of charity. The restaurant is asking for donations on behalf of the Child Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, as well as other charities associated with IHOP. Since National Pancake Day's celebration in 2006, IHOP has raised nearly $16 million for charity. The goal is to raise another $3.5 million. 
Well, that's all we have for this week's edition of Essay Today. I'm Topher Hollywood Lane. Thanks for tuning in.